In today's video, we're going to be breaking down our free Atlanta offensive guide. Now, this is episode two. We did episode one a couple days back on our YouTube channel, uh, but we're going to be talking about three-headed rushing attack today. Now, if this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, my name is Cody, and our channel is entirely devoted to helping people get better at Madden 21. We do that through tips, videos, through strategy breakdowns, and also we give a free offensive scheme away every single week from every single playbook in the game and we started with Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta is one of the best playbooks in Madden 21 and so anyways guys we post four times a day here on YouTube and so if you're interested in staying up to date with more of these videos one of the things that I do want to encourage you to do is go ahead and click subscribe and we also go live every single night at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern time. We're doing a little bit of a modified schedule right now. So check my Discord, which you can find that in the link in the description below for the latest updates on the times that we go live. All right, so Atlanta Playbook. Now we're talking about three-headed rushing attack today. And to be honest with you, Atlanta's not the best running playbook there is in the game. Um, it's really more of a pass heavy playbook. Now, if you were to say I was on the goal line, I was in the red zone, one of my favorite formations to use is this uh, single back uh, wing stack formation. This is basically wing flex close. But this formation right here used to be called ace pair chief in older Maddens. But this formation right here will get the job done for you. And we'll talk about that later on in the week, give you a little bit of a scheme. But this is specifically a formation that we can audible to audible to out of our base formation. So our base formation, we talked about in our last video on this, was, was Shotgun Bunch. We talked about Atlanta Sale and all of the great things that you can uh, do from this. So if you haven't catched uh, or haven't seen that video, um, check the description below or just head over to the YouTube channel. You can find that video very quickly. Today what we're doing and it is we're talking about single back bunch. Now this to me is one of the best single back bunches in Madden 21. There's a lot of things that you can do with this. And we are gonna talk about a couple of specific running plays that you can use. And then we'll show you some passing that we can do from this as well. And you can pick what you wanna put in your audibles. The audibles that I personally have are, uh, at least right now, are quick pitch, uh, HB slash, end around, and then I have one passing play. And it's typically going to be wide trail, and we'll show you why in a little bit. But this right here is one of the best bunches, single back bunches. And what I love about it is it's a very quick audible from the shotgun bunch. So we're going to talk specifically about uh, some of these running plays, and we're going to show you all of the runs, and then we're going to show you why certain runs work better than others. Now, quick pitch this year is really effective. I mean, it is really effective. One of the things that I personally like to do is I like to motion uh, Calvin Ridley, and I like to motion him out like I'm running a pass play, and what you'll see is it'll get, you get those cut blocks, and if you let your, if you let your blocks line up, this running play right here will take you to, the, I mean, it's it will take you to the promised land. This is a really, really good run this year. I haven't heard a lot of people talking about it, but you get really good blocking. You see, you get that, that those, you see how you get those cut blocks? That's what makes this run so good. And so if the defense is giving you any indication that you can get outside on them, take that opportunity every time. I personally, again, I love to motion Calvin Ridley out to the right here. But you see how you get those cut blocks and then you can double juke back inside there. And I mean, with Todd Gurley as your running back or if you have good running back stick, this is going to work very well for you. Now, you can see here, I can run it to the left. Now, watch. If I flip the play, look how fast it, look how fast of an audible that is. I mean, it's literally like less than a couple seconds, and now we're running hard to the to the left side. Um, I I love to flip the flip the bunch because it's such a quick flipping of the play, um, and so it just it just forces the defense, it gives them a lot to think about. Again, and I'm literally just jamming X as soon as I get out here, and then once I get them all set, I'm going to motion Julio Jones out to the left, and here you see there's quick pitch to the left. Um, this is very very simple, guys. N nothing nothing new about this concept, but I did want to show you this because this year more than any other year, I really think quick pitch is one of the best runs in Madden 21 especially from a three wide receiver set this run gets such good blocking like people are not talking about this run enough and I just wanted to showcase this this is my power run this is the run that I feel like if I have to make one run go it's this one now you see here I can't playmaker this to run to the left you see I'm playmaker to the left and it's just not going to happen but I'm telling you, you get such good blocking on this run play um, it is just really really effective quick pitch runs are so good so if you want to run this again I like to just flip it uh, when I want to run one, when I want to run to the left, and you don't have to do the motion out. I think it works a little bit better, as you see there. We did get shedded on that, but literally, it's a it's a quick motion of the of the of the offense, 
and you're right into single back bunch trips to the left now, and you're running quick pitch on them in a no huddle situation. And right there, we were able to get Waddle up. I personally think it does work a little bit better to the right side. Some people think it works better to the left. But anyway, that's a quick pitch. Um, now, the next run I want to show you is our run to the middle. Now, there's two specific ones that I want to break down. The first one is halfback draw. Now, halfback draws this year are okay. They're, they're okay. Their running in general is a lot different in this year's game, I feel like, than it was from last year. But if you run, if you have a good, if you have good run stick, you'll find that the draw runs actually are fairly usable this year. They're not terrible. Um, I find that if most of the time the defense is not going to blitz. I'm getting blitzed out of my shoes right now by the computer. Most of the time you're going to see a lot of cover two man. This is why draws actually have a play this year. If they're running cover two man and you run a draw, you see how I can quickly cut that, cut that wherever I want to go? I can literally, as long as you don't hit turbo, this is a, a piece of advice that I've always given in all of my running tutorials. The biggest thing that I've been able to learn about running the football, this is before even Madden 21, is do not hold turbo. You just want to depress the left stick. This is something that I was taught to me by Coach DC. I don't know if you guys know him, but you can check him out. He's a YouTuber. It's also something that's been taught to me by several people over the years. But when you when you don't, if you don't uh, hit turbo, it just gives you a lot more opportunity to cut. And as you can see here, this draw is killing cover two man. So if they're running a lot of cover two man on you, this is your run to the middle, in my opinion. This this run to the middle is very, very difficult to stop against man-to-man -man coverage. Now, let me show you uh, what would what it would look like. Let's say here we're a nickel three to five wide. Now, this is the this is one of the run defenses that a lot of people like to use. So we'll just show you this. Now, we are blitzing a lot of people here, but this is HP draw against that run. As you see here, it's gonna get it's gonna get boxed. Now, again, not not necessarily. The, the defense we're going to want to run against, but if they're blitzing everybody, that's just going to happen. Now, if they come out, in, in, but you're going to see this, right? So let's say they're in like dime one four six or something, and you audible to this play. This is where this is. This is where this run's going to shine right here. This is dime. I think two three six will with the max coverage setup. That's where the draw run is really going to work well for you. But I did want to show you this other rundown. This is inside or wide zone. Uh, HB slash. So HB slash can be ran to the right. Um, and I, it can also be flipped and ran to the left. Now, I personally think it works better when you run it to the left. That's just my personal opinion. The bunch, um, I have found that the bunch kind of muddies everything up. But if you want to, you can motion Calvin Ridley in, get a little bit of an extra lead blocker going, and you see you're going to be able. This is just a, it's a classic inside zone type of run here. But again, against like a dime 146, which we'll show you right here, um, HB slash is pretty good. When they're spread out, you run down the middle, right? That's the whole idea of a three-headed rushing attack. You have a run that can go to the right, you have a run that can go to the left, and you have a run that can go to the middle. So that's the middle run. Now, if you were to ask me what's better, draw or slash, I'm going to say slash just because it does do a better job against defenses that are designed to stop the run draw does a better job if you're trying to just um if you're trying to beat like a dime 146 or some of those heavy blitzing defensive metas that people will run on you i would use draw because you're going to go to it in a certain situation but if you're trying to literally ask me what's the better overall run especially if they're trying to stop the run i think hb slash because hb slash can be ran it's literally a zone run and it can be ran inside or outside. I've taught this. Uh, this was taught to me. I was watching a lot of coaching uh, clinics this last year on what the 49ers are doing. But literally what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like three or four steps. Right there, Calais Campbell just makes a, an amazing play. But I'm going to take three steps with my running back, and then I'm going to decide whether or not I'm going to go inside or outside. So three steps, and then I'm going to cut it right up. As you see there, you're getting three to four yards. Now, again, one thing that I like about the slash is you can actually cut this right down the middle of the field too if that lane opens up. With the draw, if they blitz you pressure middle, you're going to struggle with that. So that's why I like the slash over the draw, but they're both decent. Now, this end of round play is actually um, something you can run this year. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of hit or miss. It's kind of hit or miss. But this is just something if you want to mix it in, you, you'll see this does not do terrible. Um, you're gonna, it's gonna be a direct, it's gonna be a directly uh, sweep, and you're also gonna need a little bit of a specific defense. You know, that you're really gonna need them to overload. But if you give this run, if this run can get outside, this run is really good. Now again. Uh, what you're going to run this specific run against is the heavy blitzes to the middle of the field. But you see here, you typically will get really, really good blocking from your receivers, and you're able to get 
you know, in my opinion, this run is okay. Um, it's really good when you mix it in with the slash because it looks just like a slash. The only thing is the, the wide receiver's not coming out. But you see here, if you're mixing in the slash with Todd Gurley, and there you see, I mean, that's just how effective the slash run is uh, as it goes for six against, against just random defenses. But when you mix that in and you're mixing the pitch in, what's going to happen is they're going to start to blitz you when they see you go down to this formation. Well, if they blitz you against this specific run, you really want to try to make sure that you're jet sweeping it almost. You're, you're really trying to get outside fast with this run. But this run uh, will do fine for you. So you get that kick out block right there. Now sometimes you'll get, sometimes you will get uh, hit in the backfield, which is why it's a very specific defense you're going to want to run it against. So this is, this is a, this is an all out uh, run defense here. Let me show you this. This is just all out run defense. Now let me show you how this, how this run will do. So the snap of the ball. You see, and I see how they get compressed like that because they're all out run defense. Everyone's blitzing to the middle of the field. This run is going to pop against run defenses like that. That right there was the run defense that I actually recommend uh, for, for people a lot. When people ask me, how do you stop the run? This is the run defense that I actually recommend. But what you'll see with this, now again, if you have good user stick, you might be able to blow this up. But you'll see this run can oftentimes, see how it gets wide outside? This is or, uh, wide, wide to the outside there. You get those blocking angles this year on this specific run. Now when they're spread out like this, you see you will probably get stopped on this. But we'll show you. You just get out this jet sweep right here. You see how that tight end gets around? Like, I just think the blocking from this is actually very, very underrated. So that is three-headed rushing attack. So, again, if you had to ask me what runs I would pick, and I do want to show you one other run. This uh, counter run right here is not too bad. The pulling, the pulling, uh, it's, it's, it's like straight up inside dive type run. Um, what I don't like about the counter, in my opinion, if you're facing a defense – uh, let's just say you're facing something like this 3-4 over. Um, what I feel like is I feel like the counter is too easy to user blow up. Like if they get a good user, uh, this this run can really not – I mean it can be kind of stymied pretty quickly. But it's really good against some of those spread defenses. You're going to find that's kind of a theme with this rushing attack. You really want to be – again, part of having a scheme – is that making sure that everything can come out and look the same, but you can go in a lot of different directions. Well, if you're coming out and shotgun bunch every play, they're going to start going to their dime 146. And you see this counter can be ran in multiple directions, but at the core of it, it's an inside, almost like a trap. I've run it like a trap run. Um, we're basically, we're just blocking down. We're going to trap right in there. That guard's going to lead us through. And you're seeing, I mean, it's, it's a very effective run. I just think, in my personal opinion, Best bang for your buck is going to be quick pitch, HB slash, and HB in around because it's going to get all of the different angles that you want to hit the defense with. But the counters are really good run for those aggressive, um, for the for those defenses that are going to open up the middle. Um, as you see here, I mean it's it's 100%. At least in my opinion, it's a it's a middle middle run. You're going to want to run the ball to the middle with this run. Now again, you can play maker the counter to the right. You see here we're going to get those couple pulling guards here. But oftentimes, I find the counter to work better to the left. But again, if you want to playmaker the counter to the right, maybe you motion Calvin really to the left. He's going to kick out this guy right here, snap of the ball, and now you're going to, you know, night right there. We probably could have got outside to the right, but the counter is pretty good. I mean, it's it's. I would say it's not as consistent of a run as the slash, as you see right there. You know, right there, that's Todd Gurley kind of falling forward for a couple yards. But what I love about the slash is you can kind of do a little bit more with it. It's a little bit more difficult to blow it up with their user. But you see here, against the right defense, the counter is going to work just fine for you too. So a lot of really good running plays out of this single back bunch. Uh, I did want to show you really quickly um, the one passing play that I would recommend that you have uh, because I feel like you need, a, you, you need some kind of quick pass uh, out of this formation. And so I personally uh, really like the wide trail play. There's actually a lot of good passing plays um, within this formation. You can run the play uh, spot dig. Spot dig is really good, especially for the way people are playing the game so far. PA end around is really good, kind of Portland type concepts, good against cover four. Uh, but we'll show you specifically wide trail, and I'm just going to come out and show you it against, um, you know, max coverage type of defenses that you're going to see, uh, and one of those is cover two man. Now let me just show you uh, what's going to happen. This is if they run the meta on you. So this is the two purples, you know, with a shade, and what you'll find with this specific route to Calvin Ridley, when you motion him out to the right, 
He is typically, if he has a speed advantage, it's a one play score right over the top. Click on, swerve him to the inside. And as you can see, Calvin, Ridley, Calvin Ridley's route is going to beat that cover too um, when it's pressed. Um, but when it's shaded over the top, which you'll find here, uh, we'll show you this. This is just, again, a simple route. You get him way out there, kind of let him set and then go. Uh, and what you'll see here, again, pass lead up. And you see there, it's kind of a one-on-one. -on -one. It, it's they, they're still able to get over the top of that deep, out of off of that play. And then let me show you what's going on over here on this on this back side. Um, now again, we do have Julio Jones there, so you do want to. I think you want to have your best receiver at the solo, solo position. And you'll see that part of it has to do with the fact that Julio Jones is Julio Jones, but he's going to cut in and then he's going to cut out. And you see there, I'm going to be able. I can lob it over the top, but again. You'll see that if I were to flip this play, uh, it'll be a little bit more difficult for me to do that. So, you know, for the Falcons, it works because they have a really good receiver. For your your team sitting at home, you know, if you don't have a, a receiver with a really good ability like Julio Jones, and I typically will um, – actually, I will typically just call wide trail. Um, but what you'll see is motion out Calvin Ridley. And what you'll see with this route here to Julio Jones is he's going to get over the top – if I can get a second here in the pocket to, to deliver this ball, but he's going to get over the top of most of the man coverages that you're going to face. Uh, we'll shake that right now. We'll just drop back here, and you see, looks like the defense is just going to eat my lunch consistently today. But just to show. Now, one of the things you want to know about under center, when you do pass from under center, what I like to do is just flick my left stick to the left as soon as I get in the backfield. But what you'll see here, if I throw this over the top, you see Julio Jones is on top of him. Now, again, if I have a little bit better of a um, little bit better of timing there, you do want to throw it. What I like to do is I like to throw a lob streak uh, right as soon as I notice Julio Jones has the leverage to win. So. Literally, I'm just dropping back here. Oh, he gets the leverage, and it's just a lob streak one-on-one. -on -one. Click on, swerve, catch, and you get that nice over-the-shoulder uh, catching animation that we love. Now, let me show you this to the other side of the field just to show you kind of what happens when you don't have a receiver with an ability. Um, this is Calvin Ridley specifically, and it does come down mostly to speed, in my opinion, um, which you'll see here. There's that route. Now, this time, you see he's able to stay on top of it. You're kind of jockeying for position, but Marcus Peters is able to do it. So... You know, again, I just wanted to show a lot of it depends on, you know, how talented a receiver do you have and can it, as far as how many, uh, how, how consistently you're going to win over the top. You do need kind of, at least in my opinion, you need probably 90 route running, um, basically the best deep running route running you can have. Now, what you'll see, though, is this little trail route is going to be man-to-man -to, -man to the inside. You see you can click on, swerve, catch. You're going to get that nice little um, – that nice little jumping uh, ability. Now, one thing I actually really like to do with this specific play is I like to take Laquan, uh, Treadwell here, and I like to put him on a just a zig route. And what you'll see is this creates a nice little uh, natural uh, route progression for your quarterback. He's going to go with a high-low read to Calvin Ridley. So, like, if they run cover two and they're running cloud flats on this, you're going to see Calvin Ridley's route is going to do it. Typically, going to do a good job. You can pass that to the right, and as you can see there, he's going to get over the cloud flat. But also, what you're going to be able to do within this is, if they're playing cloud flat coverage, or they're playing shaded coverage over top, or they're dropping their zones back, you've got this nice little baby zig route to Laquan Treadwell, who's going to pull most of the hook zones, most of the flat zones. But if the defense is playing fall away coverage where they're just kind of coming over the top and they're they're saying, you know, hit me underneath, hit me underneath, then what you'll see is you're going to be able to hit this this uh, trail route or you're going to be able to hit that zig route um, over that defense. Now, if they're in like, let's say they're in cover three. Cover three is the defense I want people to run on this because what you'll see is this, this route to Calvin Ridley. You can just snap, throw it. And what I love about it is it's a very easy click on possession catch with your uh, with your with your coverage. So if they're running cover four, if they're basically if they're running anything except cloud uh, anything except cover two, it's just quick get it out there, and you're gonna you're gonna beat it consistently. Now what they're gonna have to do is they're literally gonna have to cloud flat that. So for example, if they were to run, let's say they run cover four, and let's say they run like hard flats, like they're gonna get out there. You know what I mean? Well, what's gonna happen is. You get that out there, just get out there quick, 
and you see they're going to have to press coverage somewhat to get that. Now, once they what they're going to and, and also what that what that's going to mean for your uh, defense is if they're pressed coverage and they're shaded down, it's going to affect how well they're going to play over the top. And what you'll see is Calvin Ridley can beat them that way. But here you see you're just going to click on and I like to just swerve catch him outside and in personally. So I take, I click on the receiver, go outside, go inside, and it's able to beat uh, the covers that way as well. So that's cover four and cover three. Anything, anything that has a deep zone. Now, if they baseline and they press and they, all that fun stuff, they're going to get out there a little bit better. But what you'll see is once he falls away, you see there he is able to get over that, over top of that. But when they baseline and start pressing at that level then what's going to happen is, and that's why you want to have a fast guy like a Calvin Ridley or, you know, maybe a Henry Ruggs or, or Rico Gafford or, you know, all these fast receivers that we have in the NFL now. He's going to get out here. Now he's pressed up. You see he doesn't fall away right at the snap. And now you've got kind of a little bit of a – you see how he stops and comes back to the ball? So a lot of it does come into are they shaded over top or not. A lot of times what you're going to find, at least this is my personal opinion, is they are going to shade over top. Now if they shade underneath, then what you'll see here, this route to Calvin Ridley, watch how this, um, you can kind of get this ball up to him over the top from a from a perspective of if you run that if you run that specific route now if they if they if it's a consistent thing where they're starting to do that what i would do is just throw him on a on a simple streak and literally it's going to be a speed match uh one on one and what you'll see here is if he has the speed to burn he's going to burn and that's why i'm saying a lot of times which matt ryan just gave me a little bit bad of a bad throw there a lot of times what they're going to do is they're going to shake coverage over top because that's if they don't do that, they're going to get burned. I mean, literally, and that's part of why, like, you have your best uh, wide receiver here on the right or on the left side running this little slant and go route. So what you'll see here is if they press up, you're going to be able to typically burn um, outside here uh, to Julio Jones as well. If you want to just – if they start doing that, just run a streak to the left and you're going to kill cover four press coverage. So, but again, a lot of really good route comments, concepts from this. This is not the only good passing play in Atlanta, but I did want to get this out there. I did want to show you a couple of the ones that I personally like the most, especially if they're running um, a lot of, just a lot of over top. If they're, if they're shading down, you know, you're not going to have the windows as much. But if they're shading over top, which they probably will be doing, you're going to be able to hit this route. I mean, you're going to be able to hit that. It's a snap, throw the ball, get it out there quick. Um, route and then what they're going to be forced to do is they're going to be forced to run some type of soft squat some type of cloud flat over there on that side and then what that's going to leave open is it's going to leave open um, the trail route as Matt, Matt Ryan throws it into the bleachers and gets picked off there but it's going to leave those trail routes open so again a lot of material in this hopefully this video uh, was helpful to you but you'll see this route or this this little wide trail route I love it against man to man Love it against zone. I think it's one of the best passing plays in Madden 21, but it's even better because you can combine it with the quick pitch. You can combine it with some of the quick, uh, quick hitting running plays from this formation, and I believe that's what makes it so so effective of a formation to be able to run as a three headed rushing type. Because not only do you have good running plays, but you have good passing plays, and you can also add up to it in a very quick manner. So. That is our three-headed rushing attack for our Atlanta Falcons free offensive scheme. Tomorrow, we're going to be bringing you, um, I think, probably our man-beating formation. Now, we're going to talk about gun-type flex a little bit and what you can do to beat man-to-man -man coverage as well as some max coverage uh, defenses that you can beat. So we'll show you that tomorrow. Um, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because that way you're going to catch up tomorrow's video. But we also got two more videos coming for you today on the channel. Um, so excited to bring those to you, some more tips and tricks uh, for Madden 21. But guys, if you have not already, I do want to encourage you before I take off, jump in the Discord. The Discord is by far, in my opinion, the best possible way you're going to get better at the game because Discord is where you're going to not only be able to collaborate with me, but it's, it's not a one-way conversation, right? My videos that I do right now, they're one-way conversations. It's me showing you something. What Discord is, is it's a um, multi-level 
multi-layered conversation, not just even a two-way conversation. You're coming conversations with not only me, but you're going to be able to have conversations with everybody in that Discord, and you're going to be able to give your ideas. So I just love Discord. I love what it's been able to do uh, for people that have uh, subscribed to my channel, and I think people have been very happy with that as well. Um, a lot of people, a lot of good feedback on the dialogue that we get, and we're just getting better every single uh, day. So just really encouraged by that Discord. And if you haven't already, I uh, just want to encourage you to consider joining that. Again, there's a link in the description that's going to take you to that Discord. But guys, we're going to see it later on uh, tonight in our live stream that's why I would like I said want you to subscribe to the channel that way you're going to be able to catch that stream but we will see you later on tonight